Today we're diving deep into a dire aspect of card collecting, whitening. Learn the mysteries behind whitening, how it happens, and the essential tips to prevent it. Whether you're into Pokemon cards or other trading cards such as Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh, this information still applies. So let's jump into it. What is whitening? Simply put, whitening is when the edge of a card sustains damage, and the white card stock becomes visible when facing the card directly. When you're buying, selling, or just collecting Pokemon cards, the condition is the most important factor. It's just the nature of a collector. We want rare items in mint condition and we want it buried with us when we die. The tiniest scratch can make the difference between a 9 and a perfect 10 when you're getting your cards graded. This could mean the loss of significant value, sometimes even thousands of dollars. One of the key things to check for is whitening. Whitening can occur on the edges or corners of a card. I suppose it could occur on the face of the card, but we would just call that damage, not whitening. When we say whitening, we're referring specifically to the edges and corners of a card. But what causes whitening? Let's explore from the edges to the microscopic level. Causes of whitening. Whitening is due to premature wear on the card's edges, resulting in a noticeable fraying and whitening effect. Pokemon cards, made of layers of cardstock, start as large sheets that are then cut up into individual cards. The face and reverse receive a sexy varnish coating, while the edges are left unprotected and susceptible to wear. There are four main culprits behind whitening, poorly cut edges, mishandling, moisture, and improper storage. Let's break down each one. Poorly cut edges. If the edges of a card are poorly cut, this could result in whitening. Sometimes we pull cards straight out of a booster pack only to find small amounts of whitening and this is irritating, for sure. It's widely believed that this is due to dull blades from the factory. Back in 2020, we saw a massive increase in the demand for Pokemon cards and the factories were printing cards at full capacity. We saw a lot of whitening that year. So this is a factor when considering whitening, but unfortunately it's out of our control, so we have to live with it. Mishandling. Remember shoving cards into your denim pockets or using an elastic band and snap around a deck of cards? Those were classic examples of mishandling, causing abnormal pressure to the edges, creating whitening. We were just kids, of course, but today we no longer have that excuse. Again, a small scratch or crease can seriously drop the value of an expensive card. So we have to be careful when handling our shiny pieces of cardboard. This is why you sometimes see people using gloves or shaking violently when they pull the first edition Charizard. But this shouldn't be intimidating. It's pretty simple actually. Just be gentle with the card and everything should be okay. When inserting the card into a sleeve, we are going to avoid applying pressure to the edges. In most cases, this won't cause damage, but now and then you'll get a tight sleeve or a tight card saver and you may want to push down on the edge. When inserting a card into a binder pocket, we want to avoid dragging the corners on the rough page, unless the card belongs to your arch nemesis, obviously. If you're inserting a valuable card into a binder pocket, always use a sleeve. There are a dozen more scenarios where you could potentially cause whitening by mishandling the card, but as a general rule, just be careful, be gentle, be mindful of the card's edges, and you should be okay. Moisture. The glossy coating may protect against water on the card's face, but the edges are still vulnerable. Moisture absorption softens the edges, making them more prone to premature wear and whitening. If your mom accidentally threw some of your cards into the washing machine when you were a kid, then you already know what water damage looks like but we are referring to smaller amounts of moisture, compromising the integrity of the card stock along the edge. If you or your kids are big into cards, then they're probably everywhere throughout the house. The risk of water damage is always there. If a single drop of water lands on the face of the card, you'll probably be able to just roll it off if you're quick, but if it touches the edge, it will be absorbed and swell into the card stock almost immediately. From this point onwards, the card is going to be very susceptible to whitening, even though you may have not noticed the moisture. If this happens, take whatever steps you can to dry the card and remove the moisture. Improper storage. Cards must be sleeved and stored correctly to avoid whitening. Don't laugh at this next part because it is not funny. 
always use protection. There are dozens of different storage methods for cards, all with different purposes. But you should be sleeving your cards at the very least. Sleeves protect the edges of your cards, preventing whitening. One thing I'd like to touch on here is the Facebook marketplace listings where you'll often see hundreds of cards just thrown into a box. Do you want whitening? Because that's how you get whitening. Truthfully, it's pretty darn easy to avoid whitening when it comes to storage. Just take care of your cards. And I get it, some people just don't know. Parents, grandparents, friends, relatives who aren't into cards might not consider the edges when moving or storing them. So if this is you, please just take a moment to not dump the cards into a shoe box. And don't shake the box. Can you fix whitening? Unfortunately, whitening can't be fixed without risking further damage to the card. I've tried. We should talk about fixing whitening versus hiding whitening. Now, I love eBay for buying cards. In my opinion, it's the best online marketplace for Pokemon cards, but I will admit there is some shady stuff going on sometimes. If you know what to look for, you'll be fine. For example, some people will try to hide whitening, and I've seen this done with two different methods. First is blue ink. Whitening is easiest to see on the back of a Pokemon card, where the dark blue ink provides a contrast to the white card stock. But what some people have done is gently color in the white with a blue pen. The other method is using a white background. Another trick I've seen here and there. Let's try this. Place the card with exceptional whitening on a white background and on a black background. It really does make a difference. If you're looking at purchasing a card and you suspect this might be happening, ask for a photo of the back with a black background. But anyway, the answer is no. Whitening cannot be fixed. Your only option is to go back in time and prevent it from happening in the first place. Preventing whitening. The best defense against whitening is fully automatic firearms. I mean, immediate sleeving and storage in protective devices. Handling cards without sleeves will risk whitening if there are any accidents. If you're just a collector, then the key is storing your cards properly. Use some of the handling guidelines we've gone over here and you should be okay. Now, if you're a player of the TCG, then things can get a little more difficult since you'll be handling your cards often. You'll obviously have your cards in some sleeves that are designed for play, but also consider your deck box or your carrying case. And Pokemon cards usually have multiple variants of a card. For example, the recent Pokemon 151 set had three different Charizard EX cards. They were all identical as far as gameplay goes, but you want to refrain from using the extra expensive special illustration rare Charizard EX and just use the rare one instead. Hopefully no one is using elastic bands anymore because this is punishable by death and if you're dead then you can't buy more booster packs. How whitening affects grading. Grading is the ultimate preservation method, but whitening can impact a card's grade. Even a slight amount of whitening may affect a card's grade. Companies like PSA have strict standards, allowing only minimal whitening for a perfect 10 grade. Other companies may offer a grade above 10, emphasizing the importance of a pristine appearance. Will a little bit of whitening prevent your card from getting a 10? Well, it depends. If we look at eBay listings or even records on the PSA website itself, we can see that you can absolutely get a 10 while having a little bit of whitening on the card. But this is going to change depending on the grading service you choose. PSA is just one of many, and you should choose the service that suits your needs best. Some of these services are much more strict than PSA and offer grades higher than 10, such as a pristine 10. In this case, you'll want to be more strict yourself as you pre-grade your cards. Liking the video lets me know that it helped someone, so please do that. And if you didn't like the video, then leave a comment and tell me how I can improve on my future videos. If you want to learn more about Pokemon cards, then check out my Pokemon Cards 101 playlist where we cover all kinds of tips for beginners just like this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.